We're so excited now to have Ryan Stresnitsky join us live. Uh, we just saw the piece that uh, Bauer did. You're part of that uh, a part of that barn team, which has been a great, uh, I think, program that Bauer has put forward here. They've been fascinating stories. Your story is probably more well known than some of the others because of what happened to you. I want to focus in on what your mom said and what was discussed in that piece about getting on the ice again in that sled for the first time. What did that feel like to you? Because the smile did tell us a lot. What was that like? What's your memory of the first time in the sled? It was incredible. I mean, for any hockey player, being at the rink, it's almost like time doesn't exist. Uh, it's the most fun and, um, you know, the best experience anyone can have. And uh, being back out there in a sled shortly after the accident just made me realize that there's more to life than just the game, right? It's about having fun. It's about inclusivity and, uh, you know, allowing everyone to play the game. Ryan, uh, that was so moving, man. I, just yeah. to go off what EJ said there, and, and the thing that kind of jumped out to me too, it's like trying to get into your mindset and hearing you say, just like EJ just said, you woke up the one morning and you said like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And it was just like this, this, this go mentality, like just I'm going. <clears throat> And I'm not asking questions. I'm not looking back. I'm going. Yeah. And then the other part that really jumped out to me was when you said it's not its not about saying I can't. You can't say I, I can't do this. You can't close those yeah. doors. It's saying how am I going to get this done? I mean, was there a moment in your recovery where um, it, it was just like, you know what? No more no's. Like this is <laughs> this is me finding a way. I'm, I've just been moved by your attitude. Yeah, I think uh, growing up, I was a pretty stubborn kid. So... Um, for someone to say I can't do something made me want to do it even more. Um, and then that's when I started kind of doing it to myself, like sort of making these arbitrary timelines that, okay, by this time I want to be able to do this or uh, whether it's on the ice at physio or wherever, I wanted to be able to do it. So I would set these timelines for myself and make sure that I got it done and did whatever it took to, to get it there. Hey, Ryan, are, are you actually surprised or impressed a little bit with, how much stronger you have become in, in that short amount of time with how amazing you've been able to adapt to sled hockey because a few things jumped out at me too. It's a more physical sport than people realize. I've been told that before. And now I noticed in the piece, you're shooting with both hands in there and that's not an easy thing. I mean, I was a righty. I wouldn't know how to shoot a puck even from that low with, with the left hand. So how hard were, were the, was those physical accomplishments to, to, the, to get to? I mean, I, I've come a long way, don't get me wrong, but I've had great teammates and coaches help get me there. I mean, I've got a long way to go, but so far I, I'm happy with where I'm at, but i got a long way to go. So uh, a lot of skills I need to pick up, especially that, that left-hand shot. I need to you know, get it as good as my right. But again, I, I'm extremely grateful for the people I have around me to get me where I am today. I'm sure you're going to figure it out. You get a lot of things figured out, it seems like, in life. Uh, I, I want to ask you about the idea of helping promote sled hockey and make it more accessible for people because you point out in the piece, and I was not really aware of that, although I really should have been because I'm around rinks a lot, and it's hard. Yeah, You don't see it that often. So give me your thoughts on trying to make it more accessible, making it more available for sleds, uh, for, for people to, take in, to make the effort to try to, to take this on. What is that uh, goal for you? What does that entail over the next several weeks, months, years? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long game, right? Uh, sled hockey isn't quite well known, but that's the point of the Bauer Initiative and their campaign is to, to bring the social awareness to it, to allow others the opportunity to understand the sport, to play it. And, uh, you know, we're currently working on making sledge more accessible through gear, through funding, what, whatever it is to get people into sleds and understand the game. And um, I mentioned in that video that when anyone's in a sled, when we're all out there, it doesn't matter the disability. The only disability you can have is a bad attitude. So in order to instill this sort of message into other people, we need to let them understand what sled hockey is, what it's about, and, you know, why people should participate. I, I met a, a, a young man that was, uh, you know, for the U.S. team, uh, for sled hockey team, and he was a former football player. He was in the military, and um, he had an accident, and he had to, uh, he was looking for something to fill that yeah. physical void, right? And then I, he was explaining it to me, and his eyes just lit up, and he's like, yeah. when I saw sled hockey, he's like, I never knew anything about hockey in general. <laughs> I'm like, wait, you could hit guys? You could go in there and be physical? I mean, is that like, you know, you came from, and you, you grew up in a, in a physical sport, and has this kind of filled that void as well? 
Oh, absolutely. It's one of the best parts, right? When you get to nail someone into the boards and take the puck off them and, and go score, it's, <laughs> yes. it's the best. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a physical sport. It's, uh, um, you know, more physical than people think. And, again, with those spikes on the end of our stick, you got to watch out for those as well. So, I mean, that's, that's the whole fun of it. And, uh, you know, that's why I fell in love with hockey from a young age. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because over these last several years, we've had the opportunity on the show to interview guys from Team USA uh, with their sled team. And that rivalry with Canada is a great rivalry. And I would urge anyone who hasn't watched, it's coming up, it's the great. Paralympics are coming up again. The Team USA, Team Canada rivalry in sled hockey is a terrific one. Looks like you're trying to be a part of it in another four years in 2026. But uh, give me your thoughts on... On, on all, like Mike talked about the physical play, guys use those sticks, they use those picks. It's nasty out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a crazy game. It's super fast. And, um, you know, that rivalry, I think, is is one of the best games to watch, right? It's, it's such an amazing game, and those athletes are absolutely incredible. The amount of work they put in, a lot of them come to Calgary to train, and some of them I train with, and just the amount of work they put in to, to win that gold medal, to make a name for Team Canada is, is absolutely incredible, and I, I'm so envious, and I, I want to be just like them. So that's what I'm working towards, and uh, nothing but respect for, for all people who play sled hockey at that level. Hey, Ryan, you were just, you know, you're talking about the, the need for more equipment, uh, et cetera. I mean, you know, we know what it costs to more or less outfit a player. You know, what about, so what does it cost to outfit a, a sled, the sled and all the other equipment? Uh, so maybe people out there have a better understanding and find a way to help support. It, it's about roughly the same. I mean, the, the most expensive part is, is the bucket, but Again, that's where Bauer's initiative is coming in to make it more accessible so that we can work on the problems like that. Because, you know, growing up, hockey, you know, it's not a cheap sport. And a lot of kids sacrifice a lot of time. A lot of parents and families sacrifice a lot of time and money to invest into the sport. And I think that's where Bauer can step in and, and hopefully change that for sled hockey players because it's such an amazing sport. And if someone can get into it, regardless if they want to make it to the national level or, level or not, I think it's just an important sport to play and you make a lot of memories and connections and that's the whole point of the Bauer campaign. Ryan, thanks so much for the time and thanks for inspiring all of us with uh, your journey. I've been reading up on you. I know that you're making a lot of progress, so that is great. Continued uh, the practice with the sled hockey and I expect to see you in 2026. And in between, I also expect you to come back and join us on this show. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for having me.